I'm going to be speaking today about the connection in nature uh, between mycelium, mushroom mycelium, the fine network underground that creates mushrooms, and the relationship uh, to bees. And underscoring this concept is that we're all interconnected in nature, and since fungi create soils, they're in a relationship with the organisms that depend upon uh, soils is very intricate and complicated. Over billions of years of evolution, there's been these alliances. And we uh, scientists now are discovering um, knowledge hidden within the fabric of nature. And what my research has unveiled is that there's an intimate connect connection between mushroom mycelium, especially wood conchs that grow on trees, and bees, and bee, uh, the health of bees. Bees are critically important for our food biosecurity. More than 30% of our food is directly dependent upon bee pollination. Most fruits, nuts, um, and many vegetables, but surprisingly to many people is hay and alfalfa and canola, which is essential for the dairy industry. So most of the dairy products that you consume come from bee pollination benefit. And as we lose bees, then we are losing the, not only our biosecurity in nature, but it's increasing the cost of food production. So I'm really excited to have, uh, be the messenger from mycelium. Um, these ideas are really from nature and I've discovered some things that are quite surprising and exciting because these are actionable solutions uh, using applied mycology to be able to help the ecosystem and also help e economies in preventing poverty and preserving food biosecurity. All of us depend upon food. So this is a unification of everyone from the political spectrum, everyone from different social strata, all share in common the need for healthy and, and, um, and food. The species in particular that we have found to be beneficial to bees are many of these wood conchs that grow on trees. Um, and you have these uh, wood conchs in the genus Ganoderma. Uh, there's Ganoderma aplanatum, which is the artist conch, and you have a native species called Ganoderma australi. Now, we have found about six of these uh, polypore mushrooms are highly beneficial to bees, uh, and it's very likely that many of the species that you have indigenous to the forest here will be essential for protecting bees. And so, the ecosystems of your forest and your biodiversity in this country is essential for biosecurity, and that's something that we need to protect and preserve and study. With any new breakthroughs in science, you push against conventional wisdom. And the use of magic mushrooms, psilocybin mushrooms, and the genus Psilocybe in particular, um, has got a lot of popularity in the 60s and 1970s as for recreational purposes. Now scientists at Johns Hopkins and universities around the world, there's a, almost a dozen clinical studies showing that these substances within these magic mushrooms are extremely helpful for PTSD, for uh, dementia, uh, for uh, overcoming uh, uh, addictions to drugs, including alcohol, with remarkable success rates. And this is something that needs to be further explored, is that these substances now have bona fide medical applications. And at the higher doses, you require a hospital visit being taken uh, care of very carefully by psychiatrists. But at the very low doses, micro doses, well below the threshold of you feeling anything, there's increasing evidence that it uh, causes neurogenesis. All of us will suf suffer some for, uh, form of dementia as we get older. Uh, that's what happens as you get old. You, you, uh, you have neuropathies. You have a degeneration of, of, of your nervous system. And these substances that we know now causes neurogenesis. So it's very possible in the near future that psilocybin will be reframed as a nootropic vitamin that everyone can take at very low doses. So you feel you have no physical effect that you can sense. But over the long term, the benefits to society is to preserve the intellectual capital uh, of our elders. And as elders die, we lose encyclopedias of knowledge. And it's a tragedy to see these great geniuses at the end of their life losing their mental faculties because they have a, such a long lifespan of knowledge to pass on to the next generation. We cannot afford to lose that. And so the possibility of preserving intellectual capital of our elders is critically important for the survival of not only this country, but all countries. We're at a critical point uh, in 
on, with life on this planet. And we're losing biodiversity. And so it really is an all hands on deck moment. We need as many people inspired, uh, having actionable solutions to help the biosphere. And what I'm really proud is there's so many young mycologists um, here in Chile as well. Uh, and I urge you to support the Fungi Foundation uh, here in Chile because we need a lot of young scientists stepping forward to be able to put these solutions in practice. And so this is a wonderful time uh, in the field of mycology because it's uh, very rich with potential solutions. We just need more scientists to be engaged.